Hey guys, it's Bella and welcome back to my channel and also another unsolved mystery video. I'm not uploading this on a Monday as you guys probably already know because today is actually the 10 year anniversary of the case that we're going to be talking about and this is a massive case, probably the most famous missing persons case in the world I would actually say and um, most of you have probably already heard about it and that is the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. On May 3rd in 2007, Madeleine McCann disappeared from an apartment in Praia de Luz in Portugal. Madeleine was born in Leicester in the UK and she lived there with her parents Kate and Jerry as well as her two younger siblings. They were twins and they were two years old at the time of her disappearance and her parents were doctors. On Saturday, April the 28th in 2007, the McCann family arrived in Portugal in Praia de Luz to start their little spring break holiday. They were having a week-long holiday in Portugal and um, the place that they were staying at Pride Luz is actually known as Little Britain by some people because so many British people holiday there and actually own homes in the area. The McCann's are staying in apartment 5A in the Ocean Club which was a two-story ground level apartment. The apartments that they were staying in were actually owned by people who like rented them out to tourists and stuff like that um, and it was like a part of or it was inside of the Mark Warner Ocean Club Resort and they were staying in the same apartment block or the same like little complex as seven of their friends and their friends children who are also known as the Tapas Nine. The day of Madeline's disappearance was just like any normal day so they started off the kids went to the resort's kids club they then went back and had a family lunch at the apartment before heading down to the pool together which was actually where uh, the last photo of Madeline was ever taken by Kate she was sitting by the pool with her her twin siblings as well as her dad. Kate then took the children back to the apartment while Jerry went and had an hour-long tennis lesson. They came back and took the kids down to the resort's kid club again so that the kids could have dinner before going back to the apartment and getting ready to go have dinner themselves. They put the kids to bed at about 8 p.m., had a glass of wine together, and then they headed down to the tapas bar which was 50 yards away from their apartment and it was like past the pool so you had to walk past the pool to get to the tapas bar and they were the first of their friends to arrive at the tapas bar the adults did this every night where they would go down and have dinner at the tapas bar and leave their kids in the apartment and they would have checks on them like every half hour they had this one table that they always sat at which you could actually see the apartments from but you couldn't see the apartment doors you could just see the apartments and um, they actually had there was a note left in the resorts message book which was left in the pool's reception which said that every night at 8 30 p.m. the specific table was booked for the McCann's and their friends. At 8 55 p.m. the routine checks of the children started and the first to go was Matt Oldfield. He went to check on his children closely followed by Jerry McCann at 9 05. When the McCann's left their children in the uh, apartment they actually left the patio door unlocked so they could check on them that way. The, cur the curtains for the patio door were closed but the the patio door itself was unlocked and their reasoning for this was basically because previous nights they had checked on them through the front door which they had to unlock every time they went in and they just found that that was too noisy they didn't want to wake the children so they decided to go through the patio door but the patio door could only be locked from the inside so they had to leave it unlocked so that they could get in to check on them. When Jerry first went to check on the children he noticed that their bedroom door was slightly open when they had left it pretty much closed with only like a tiny little glap so it wasn't like all the way pulled shut that you had to like twist the handle to open it. It was just like a tiny bit open if you know what I mean. But he noticed that it was open a lot more than they'd left it so he kind of wondered if maybe Madeline went into their room. He glanced in there but then he noticed that all three children were still asleep in their room and basically just closed the door back to how it was and left to go back to the restaurant but on the way to the restaurant he saw one another tourist who was there who he was friends with Jeremy Wilkins who wasn't at dinner that night because he couldn't like hit one of his children wouldn't settle down so they stopped and had a little chat and at the same time Jane Tanner was on the way to check on her own children and she saw Jerry and Jeremy talking apparently but they didn't see her but she also saw a man um, who was carrying a child walking 
walking away from the apartments and he was apparently carrying a little girl who was wearing pink pajamas and she was like limp in the guy's arms kind of like sleeping but she didn't really think too much of it because it's kind of like a normal thing I guess like you're holidaying like some people are bound to be carrying their sleeping children home so she didn't really take my no much notice and just went and went to just check on her children. At 9.30 p.m. Kate went to check on her children again but Matt Oldfield was actually going to check on his kids so he just offered to check on Maddie and the twins for her. When he went he noticed again that the door was a little bit open but obviously he doesn't know how much they left the door open so he didn't take much notice at the time and it seems like he didn't really have a good look like it seems like he just kind of peeked in and just had like a little like a little peep in um, and he saw the twins there but he can't say for sure if he saw Madeline and he also can't say for sure if the window was open so it seems like he didn't really check or maybe he's holding something back or I don't really know but so at 10 p.m. Kate went to check on her own children this time and as she did she went to grab the handle of the bedroom door and it kind of like slammed shut on her kind of like blown by a gust of wind or something like that so then she went in and she noticed that the window was open which is what caused the like gust of wind to shut the door and she also noticed that Madeline was gone. The twins were still there sleeping but weirdly enough Kate left them in the apartment to go and tell her friends at the tapas bar that Madeline was gone and what was even weirder is that when she went to tell them Madeline was gone she didn't say like Madeline's gone or Madeline's missing she said they've taken her which just seems like a really weird thing to say and it seems weird that if you think someone's taken Madeline that you would leave your sleeping children in the same apartment but I don't know I don't want to get too much into that right now anyway after Kate told the group that Madeline was missing Jane immediate was immediately was like oh my god I saw a man carrying a little girl so they went down to the 24-hour reception and they told them that Madeline was missing they immediately called the police at 10 15 p.m. and then at 10 30 the police arrived and later on the National Criminal Investigation Police Unit arrived at the at the resort as well they conducted a search for Madeline they used dogs hotels stuff and even guests um, helped look for Madeline but unfortunately she was nowhere to be found. While everyone looked Jerry and Kate actually sat in the apartment they just stayed in the apartment they didn't help with the search at all um, but they did end up making a brief statement that night to the press saying that they wanted whoever had Madeline to bring her home or anyone that had any information to bring that forward and this could have been either helpful or detrimental to the case because obviously them doing this would have alerted whoever took her if someone did take her that you know they're on the look like they're looking for this person which just gives them more motive to run unfortunately there were quite a few mistakes that were made in the search for Madeline that definitely could have been detrimental to her case and helping find her and if these mistakes weren't made who knows maybe Madeline would have been found that same night. The first mistake they made was they didn't seal off the apartment as a crime scene so 20 odd people came in and out of this apartment which definitely 100% contaminated the scene. Everyone's DNA evidence would have been in there and it would have been so hard to get a DNA match from the apartment considering so many people were going in and out. Um, on top of that they didn't alert alert the border guards that uh, this had happened until a few hours after they searched for Madeline and Interpol did not put out a global missing person alert until like five days after Madeline's disappearance. So the man that Jane saw she described as dark haired, five foot seven, anywhere from 35 to 40 and apparently he didn't look like a tourist and this was actually corroborated by an Irish couple, the Smith family, Martin and Mary Smith. They reported that at 10 p.m. they saw a man holding a little girl who was kind of limp and looked uncomfortable to carry. The girl that the man was carrying, the Smith couple said apparently she was about three to four, she was pale and had blonde hair. They also said that she was wearing pink pajamas and they described the man as having a slim to normal build. He was about 5'7 to 5'8 and he looked like he was in his mid-30s. They also said that he didn't look like a tourist so their two descriptions of this guy were very very similar. So they looked for this guy for years because obviously whoever it would have been would have been a major suspect. Apparently in 2013 Metropolitan Police said that it was a British tourist carrying their child back to their apartment but I'm not really sure how true 
true that is. So that's pretty much all of the information. I'm going to start getting into the theories now. And the first theory that I want to talk about, well, I don't know if this one is so much of a theory, um, but this is the first suspect that they actually had in this case. The first official suspect in this case was Robert Murat, and he lived in a villa owned by his mother, which was about 150 yards away from apartment 5A that the McCanns were staying in. And he also was a uh, helpful translator to the police in the investigation until a journalist actually um, reported him in and said that he was really suspicious and that she just had like a gut feeling that he was guilty. Robert did have an alibi and he said that he was with his mother from 8 p.m. that night when she got home. All night they were just talking in the kitchen and well, his mum corroborates this. They ended up searching his home on May 14th, and then again, August 4th and 5th, that weekend, they searched his home again, even using sniffer dogs, but they didn't find anything, and later he was cleared because there was no evidence that he was involved in the case in any way, I don't think. The McCanns also soon became suspects of their own daughter's murder, and they actually flew in two sniffer dogs from Britain to Portugal. One was trained to sniff out blood, and one was trained to sniff out dead bodies, and they were shown around the resort and a few other areas, but they alerted only to the McCann's apartment, um, and then later on, the a cadaver dog actually alerted to the back of the McCann's rental car, but they actually didn't get this rental car until a few weeks after Madeline's disappearance. They did test samples from the boot of the McCann's car, the rental car, but they were inconclusive. And this brings us to our next, or our first theory actually, and that is that the McCanns actually killed her. This theory doesn't actually state that they outright killed her, like purposely. It's more so that they accidentally killed her and then they tried to cover it up so that they wouldn't get in trouble. It is possible that the McCanns gave their children sedatives or drugged their children so that they would sleep while they were out at the restaurant. Kate actually stated uh, that the morning of Madeline's disappearance, Madeline said to her, why didn't you come while we were crying? And this kind of give them, gives them reason to give their children a sedative so that they didn't cry throughout the night or they didn't wake up and freak out that their parents weren't there. So it definitely gives them reason to give them a sedative so that they slept while they were out at dinner. Um, and it's possible that maybe when they did give, the, give this to them, they gave Madeline too much and she died. This one kind of seems unlikely to me because as I said before, they are doctors. So I feel like they would know how much to give to their child. Um, but the other theory is that maybe Madeline didn't react well to the whatever they gave her, whatever they might have given her. So if the McCanns actually did give them something and Madeline passed away from this, it definitely gives them a motive to cover it up, hide Madeline's body, and try and pass it off as an abduction. Further on this theory, there were two sketches that were drawn of the supposed sighting of the man who was carrying the sleeping girl. And surprisingly, they actually look a lot like Jerry, which uh, some people have noticed. And this could mean that maybe the friends are in on it and they're lying for the McCann so that they don't get in trouble or for who knows what reason. And that maybe Jane didn't actually see Jerry and Jeremy talking. Maybe the reason that Jerry was gone for so long was because he was hiding Madeline's body rather than actually talking to his friend. There's a really interesting article that I'm going to link below because I don't want to go through the whole thing because it is quite a long article, um, but it's called 48 Questions I Have for Kate McCann. And it is so interesting and so eye-opening and I definitely recommend you guys reading it. Um, but I just want to go over a quick point that they make in it, which is why did Kate immediately say they've taken her and leave her children, her twins, in the apartment. Now I find this so strange because I feel like the first instinct would, you would have is she's gone like have a look for her around the apartment complex or something like that. Like I feel like you wouldn't just jump to they've taken her. Like who is they? Why do you think someone has taken her? Why could she not have gotten out and wandered out by herself considering the patio doors were unlocked? And if you did think somebody had taken her, 
why would you then leave your two other children in an unsafe apartment? Just doesn't make any sense to me. I also read a little while ago um, that I just thought I'd mention this is apparently they spent some of the money from the charity, Madeline's charity fund to pay off their mortgage, which I just, I don't agree with at all. Apparently because the Portuguese sus suspected Jerry and Kate, they actually told Kate that if they admitted to killing Madeline and hiding their body, that Kate would only get two years in prison and Jerry would get off scotch-free. But in July 2008, the McCanns were officially ruled out as suspects and the investigation into their involvement in it was closed. Now, I believed this theory for the longest time, I'm not gonna lie, up until I found out how much money they had spent on like private investigators and everything else to try and help find Madeline, they have spent something like 11 million euros, which translate to like 19 million dollars to try and find Madeline. And that seems like a crazy amount of money to be spending on something when you already know that she's dead or you know what happened to her. It makes me like take a step back and believe like maybe they didn't do this because who is gonna spend 11 million euros on something like that. So now I'm just gonna get into the next theory and my next theory is the Pizzagate theory. And if you guys have never heard of the Pizzagate theory, it basically involves a bunch of US politicians like the Clintons and says that they are running this massive sex trafficking ring and they use pizza uh, terms as code words for their sex trafficking like little Thing. Now the reason that this theory is relevant to this case is because the sketches that I talked about before look really scarily similar to John and Tony Podesta, like creepily similar to these two guys. And John Podesta was actually Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. Now some people actually went as far as to say that John Podesta was in Portugal at the time of Madeline's disappearance, um, but that was never proven and it was just a bunch of speculation and I feel like it was just people trying to reach to make this theory work and I don't believe this theory at all because the sketches are two different artist interpretations of the same guy. So they're not images of two different people like John and Tony Podesta per se, they are two images of the same person. So it doesn't make sense that this has anything to do with the Pizzagate theory or John and Tony Podesta. But I will say it is creepy how similar these drawings look to them. Now the next theory is that Madeline was taken by a stranger, whether that was a planned abduction or a burglary gone wrong. And I'm just gonna quickly talk about the burglary gone wrong theory, which is basically that maybe somebody broke into the apartment to try and steal a few things and Madeline saw them, so they decided to kill her. And this theory doesn't make a lot of sense to me because I feel like if a burglar saw like a three-year-old girl, he would just try and get the hell out of there. He wouldn't just stay there and like kill her. Like that seems like such a step up from burglary and such an unnecessary thing that I just can't see it happening unless he decided to, for some reason, even though he was only in there to burgle a house, for some reason decided to kidnap her. I don't know. However, it is possible that a singular person or a group of people actually abducted Maddie. Considering the parents did go out every night and left the children in the apartment, they definitely could have put two and two together and realized that the kids were gonna be alone during the night. Apparently there was a few men, like four or so men I think it was, that were acting really suspicious close to the apartment complex um, for a few days prior to Madeline's disappearance, uh, but these men were never identified. It's possible that someone who did abduct her sold her to a family who was grieving over the loss of a child or a family who was desperate to have a child. Um, possibly they sold her into sex trafficking or even killed her themselves. There have been something like almost 9,000 possible sightings in 101 different countries since Madeline disappeared. And I mean, that does make it possible that some of these sightings have been real and that she is part of a sex trafficking ring or that somebody does have her. Now, the last theory that I wanna talk about is a theory that Madeline actually got out herself. Now, this is not impossible considering the patio doors 
were unlocked and maybe she got out and she got lost or she fell into a construction site or someone saw a vulnerable three-year-old girl who was lost and decided to take her. But for this to happen, Madeline would have had to open the patio door, like get out of the curtains, maybe open the curtains, close the curtains behind her, close the patio door behind her, open the child gate at the top of the stairs to the um, bottom of the patio, close the child gate, walk down the stairs, open the gate at the bottom of the patio then close the gate behind her which led to the street now this is not impossible but it's highly unlikely I would say there have recently been um, a new lead which the police are really keen on so Jenny Murat the mother of the first suspect Robert she said that she saw a woman who was dressed in purple and she was kind of loitering around just outside the McCann's apartment standing under this lamppost and she was just looking really suspicious she didn't understand why in the middle of the night in a complex some random woman would just be standing there just staring into this apartment and apparently she was spotted there about two hours before Kate discovered that Madeline was missing. Now police have been looking for this woman for quite a while now and they think that they finally found her and they're ready to move in and ask her some questions and they're really really keen on this. They think that this could even lead to an arrest. It's said that this woman had a connection to a staff member at the hotel, which um, I didn't read on this, but I thought maybe if she had a connection to someone at the staff hotel, maybe the staff member had seen the note that said the McCanns had block booked this table for all of these nights at 8.30 p.m. So she knew specifically because of this note that the McCanns were not gonna be home from 8 p.m. onwards. But this woman has become a prime suspect and the police actually think that it might lead to an arrest, which is honestly incredible. I really do hope that something comes of this new lead because it has been 10 years. I feel like it's finally time for the parents to get some closure. But that is all of the information for today's video. Um, personally, I am so stumped on what theory I believe because I was adamant that it was the parents. I 100% thought, yes, it's the parents. They have done this. There is so much evidence that leads to them. But then when I discovered how much money they had spent, I was like, there's no way someone would spend that amount of money to look for someone who they know is dead. So now I'm totally stumped and I have no idea what I think happened. I feel like the most logical explanation would that would be that somebody had seen that they weren't there that night, that every night they went out from 8.30 p.m. and they knew that they were gonna be away, so they took Madeline. But I would love to know your guys' thoughts on this case, what you think. Definitely feel free to comment down below. And this is a huge case, so I'm sure I've probably left out some sort of evidence. And if you guys remember any of that evidence that I've left out, feel free to comment it down below so that other people can uh, hear this evidence as well. And yeah, um, that's everything for today. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then please make sure to give it a thumbs up for me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hopefully I will see you guys next time. Bye.